Caesar's response to her dream is, what can be avoided? Whose end is proposed by the mighty gods? Yet Caesar shall go forth, for these predictions are to the world in general as to Caesar. Now, keep in mind that on these AP prompts, you only have 40 minutes to read and write your essay. So truly, we're looking here for Calpurnia's effectiveness to persuade Caesar to remain at home. So we're not going to annotate the poop out of Caesar's responses. All you need to know really here is that he's saying, um, how should I avoid what the gods want? I'm just going to go do what I want anyways. And, and plus, your dream is very general to the world. It might not even apply to me, Caesar. All right, so he's still not convinced. Calpurnia goes on to say, when beggars die, there are no comets seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth the death of princes. So when common people die, there's nothing spectacular. But when the princes, people of importance die, then something strange happens, like the heavens blazing forth themselves. Um, you could take a note uh, that that would be personification. And she's also using imagery again. You could see that for yourself. And what is Caesar's response? He says, cowards die many times before their death. The valiant never taste of death but once. Of all the wonders that I have yet have heard, it seems to me most strange that men should fear, seeing that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. Up here, he's saying that cowards, they experience death many times, probably because their life is um, not so fulfilling and they feel pain often. Um, but somebody who's brave and a leader only dies once. Um, again, we don't really need to annotate this. We want to see what's convincing about her argument. Here, um, he's still not convinced to stay home, right? So but her rhetorical techniques of using imagery, alliteration, personification have not prevailed. It's not a success. Um, the main rhetoric, or excuse me, rhetorical technique that you can write about extensively here would be imagery. If you do want to um, go and do an offshoot of personification, um, perhaps you can make that work, but my suggestion for this essay would be to look at imagery and how she uses that to um, try to paint a picture of death and doom in Caesar's mind. But it was not effective. There's a line here that splits up one scene to a next, and Calpurnia is going to use a new technique here. So in this first part, she used imagery. In the second part, what is she going to use? Let's see. She says, alas, my lord, your wisdom is consumed in confidence. There's a side note, consumed in confidence means destroyed by too much confidence. She's saying that he's cocky, right? So she's kind of like calling him out for his cockiness. And then she says, do not go forth today. Call it my fear that keeps you in the house and not your own. Call it my fear and not your own. So here she's starting to understand um, what is important to her audience. Her audience is Caesar, and Caesar has a lot of pride. Caesar equals proud. So here she's appealing to his emotions. And also looking at his credibility ethos. So she says, don't worry, it won't hurt you to stay home because people assume that you're fearful because just tell them it's my fear. It's not your fear, it's my fear. Um, and that appeals to his pride or pathos. Okay? 
She continues, we'll send Mark Antony to the Senate House, and he shall say, you are not well today. Let me, upon my knee, prevail in this. So she's begging. She's on her knees. That could also play into pathos, right? To see your wife begging you like that, you might feel bad for her, feel pity. So that can play into pathos. Okay, I've got one more video to record. Part three is coming up.